What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Um, today we're going to be working physics 207 exam 1 2019. Um, and from now on, I'm going to be starting my videos with a quote that I found like inspirational or a quote I've never heard before. So the quote of the day is, a bottle of water can be 50 cents at a supermarket, $2 at the gym, $3 at the movie, and $6 in a plane. The same water, the only thing that changed its value was the place. So next time you feel your worth is nothing, maybe you're at the wrong place. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so for number one, I'm going to make it pop up right right there. Um, you can screenshot, take a picture or anything, and I'm going to get straight into the work. Um, so first off, let me draw it real quick. Um, that, that, and then we have negative Q1, Q3, negative Q1, then we have Q3, and then we have Q2, and I think that's all. Yeah, we have Q2, and we know this is at A, and we know it's at, and we know um, charge X is at A, H, 2H. Yeah, this is H right here. We know this is H, and we know this is 2H. This is 2H right here. So, <clears throat> okay. So now since we're done with that, um, we're trying to find the force that would be exerted on positive charge Q3. So let's start off um, with the formulas that we're gonna need. Um, we're gonna know, we know that the force on three is gonna be equal to the force on one plus force on two, okay? Next thing we're gonna need to write is we're gonna need to find the force, so let's write Coulomb's law. Um, F is equal to KQ1, Q2 over R squared and it's gonna be the magnitude of both. The magnitude of both. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna need, um, let's start with finding the force on Q1. So we know this is negative and that is positive, so it's gonna be an attractive force. So this is gonna to attract to there and it's gonna bring back an attractive force that way. So we have negative Y and we have zero X. So let's start off with the force of one force of 1 is equal to 0 ix plus negative k. Negative k because it's going downwards in the y direction. Then we have q1 acting on q3 over the r is going to be, um, are we given what negative q1 is? Okay, yeah, the r is going to be b plus h squared. b plus h squared. Yeah, zero, negative B. Yeah, we're given this is negative B. So this to here is B, and this to there's gonna be B plus H squared. So, and this is gonna be in the I hat Y. And that's it for, yeah, that's it for the force of one. Now for the force of two, um, we're gonna need to find from Q2 to Q3. So we're gonna to need to find the, the distance, the radius for this one. So we know this part is A and this part is gonna be H. So let's take this, where is it? Yeah, we're going this way, we're going this way. So this is where the force is gonna be. The force is gonna be exerted that way. So we know it's gonna be negative, negative. This is Fe, this is Fe for the two. That's Fe for the two, so it's gonna be negative. And we can just take cosine theta, take that as theta, and let's write what cosine is going to be. Cosine theta is going to be a over a squared plus h squared. Square root a squared plus h squared. And let's write sine theta is going to be h over a squared plus h squared. So now we're ready to find the force of two. So F two is equal to, we're gonna do the X direction, it's gonna be negative K, because it's in the negative X direction. So it's gonna be negative K Q, Q two, Q three over 
r is a squared plus h squared. So just square it, the square root is gonna go away. a squared plus h squared. Then you have to add the cosine theta because it's in the x direction, i x. And then add another negative k q to q three all over a squared plus h squared sine theta i y okay so now after that um, we're ready to all you have to do is substitute that in substitute that in and after that we're ready to write the final equation so i'm going to write straight into it f3 we're combining this this is zero x so we're going to have to write this x first it's going to be negative k q2 q3 over a squared plus h squared but then cosine theta is taking the half so it's going to be 3 over 2 times a so it's going to be 3 over 2 times a yeah and a so that is the ix now we're going to move on to the iy so we have negative over there so we're just going to put it in brackets negative k q1 q3 over b plus h squared i y b plus h squared and then we're just going to continue b plus h squared um this is plus minus So this is gonna be plus minus, or you can just put directly negative. You can put directly negative up there. So this is gonna be minus kq2 q3, and sine theta is gonna have h. So it's gonna be h all over the same thing over here, a squared plus h squared three over two and this is in the IY direction. And that should be the same answer they got in the answer key. Okay, yeah, it's the, yeah, it's the same answer they got in the answer key, and that's it for number one. Let's move on to number two. Okay, um, number two now. Uh, the question is going to pop up right here. Um, this is what we're going to do. Let's get straight into working it. So we're trying to find the electric field at x equals st. So let's draw that real quick. Um, so we have a, and then this whole area is q, and we have a point here that's at s and at y, t. And we're trying to find the electric field at that point. So let's get started. Um, let's start off first by taking a DQ right here, and let's start off by drawing. Let's start off by drawing the direction electric field is going to go. So it's going to be negative. It's going to be negative x and negative y direction. So we know that, and let's get started. So let's start off by finding lambda which is the charge over the unit. So we have Q and we have A, so it's gonna be Q over A, which is equal to DQ over DX. So now let's find DQ. We can get DQ is equal to Q over A DX. Now since we have that, let's start off by writing the electric field formula. Electric field is equal to KQ over R squared, R squared, IR. So let's take the derivative of that. Derivative is going to be equal to K D Q over R squared, IR. So now let's substitute. Um, yeah. Now Ashi. Yeah. Actually. Um, yeah. Let's put, let's start off by taking the cosine theta and the sine theta. So we're gonna need the cosine theta is gonna be this. Let's put that as theta. It's gonna be from here. Let's name this x. It's gonna be s minus x is this distance right here. 
s minus x this distance right here is going to be t so this right here is going to be the square root of s minus x squared plus t squared that's the radius so let's start out by writing cosine theta is equal to s minus x s minus x all over square root s minus x squared plus t squared and then sine theta is just going to be t over s minus x squared plus t squared so we have both of those now let's start off by writing the e x for the electric field so we're going to have k and substitute dq kq over a and then we're going to take the integral from 0 to a which is the electric field and we're going to put in we're going to put in the cosine theta cosine theta dx yeah we're going to put in the we're going to put in the r squared we're going to put in the r squared so let's get started 1 over r squared is going to be that and then you have this added to it multiplied by it so it's going to be s minus x over s minus x squared plus t squared 3 over 2 3 over 2 and then don't forget the dx from this equation right here dx and then we have e y is going to be k q over a the same thing 0 a but this time you have t over s minus x squared plus t squared 3 over 2 dx so now when you have both of those this is where you simplify um, this is going to be equal to once you take the integral of this this part is going to be we're going to use the integral that's given on the first page of the exam so once simplified is going to be 1 over s minus x squared plus t squared half and this one is going to be times kq over a times kq over this one is going to be kq over a times s minus x over t squared s minus x squared plus t squared half so now after you're given that you just substitute from a to zero and the final answer for e x is going to be k q over a then it's going to be one over one over s minus a squared plus t squared minus one over and this is going to be to the half s squared plus t squared to the half and that is the final answer for ex and now for ey is going to be negative it's going to be negative let me see where is it at yeah ey is going to be yeah ey is going to be negative um so negative k q over a and you're gonna have a t right here it's gonna be negative k q t over a negative k q t over a because you have that let me see yeah you're substituting where the where the t right here k q over a oh yeah the t you left the t out yeah the t was left out i just made this one over s minus x squared and took the integral of that there so it's negative kqt over a and then you have s minus a over t squared s minus a squared plus t squared half and then this is all minus s over t squared s squared plus t squared half and that is the final answer for ey and that should be similar to the answer in the answer key except they simplified the t and crossed it out over here and just left the t on the bottom 
So that's it. So now for number three, they want us to find the potential difference. Um, this is gonna be part A and B, so I'm gonna get straight into working it. First, we're gonna write F is equal to Q naught alpha x cubed i x, and then we have plus Q naught beta y i y i y. So let's start off with the formula: negative um, negative v r two minus v r one is equal to the integral of r1 to r2 e dot dr. So um, let's take the integral. Actually, um, yeah, we know e is equal to f over q. So to find the e, we just divide it by q. So now we know e is going to be alpha x cubed i x plus beta y, okay? So now we can get started. We're gonna do from V, C, D, minus V, A, B, which is equal to negative integral of A to C in the x direction, E, X, D, X, plus b to d e y d y e to d b y d y e y d y and then we take the integral of this is going to be alpha x4 over 4 a to c negative plus um, e y is going to be beta y squared over to um, b to d. And after you take that, the change in potential is going to be negative alpha c4 over 4 minus alpha a4 over 4. And then you're adding it to e y, which is going to be beta d squared over 2 minus beta b squared over 2. And that should be the final answer, and that's what they get in the answer key. Yeah, that's what they get in the answer key, except they just simplified. So now we're going to do part B real quick over here. So for part B, um, they give us 0, 3R, and that, so we're gonna start off by writing it again. So this one is gonna be from zero, zero, to three R, zero. Then we have E R, D R, which is equal to negative V, three R, zero, minus V, zero, zero. So now let's get started. Um, we're gonna take the integral v 3 r 0 minus v 0 0 is equal to negative integral of 0 to r we're given is 0 so this is going to be 0 plus r to 3 r and we're given this alpha over r squared dr so once you take the integral of that it's going to be negative alpha over r r to 3r, which is equal to alpha 1 over 3r minus 1 over r, which is equal to negative, negative 2 alpha over 3r, because when you multiply this by 3, it's going to be 3, 3, it's going to be 3, 3 over 3r, three and 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And this is the final answer. And that's it for question number 3. So for the last and final question, they want us to find the flux through each of the block and assume how are they related. So for this one, um, we're going to go by it quick. Um, so we're going to start off with the flux 
for the, we're gonna start off with the flux for the front. We're gonna start off with the flux for the front. We know it's coming perpendicular, so we know the front is gonna have an IZ, it's gonna have an IZ direction, and we don't have any IZ. IZ by IX is equal to zero, and IZ by IY is equal to zero. So the flux is equal to zero for the front. Now we're gonna do the back is going in the negative IZ direction. So when you multiply that by IX, it's gonna be also by zero. When you take the dot product with IY, it's also going to be zero. So that's the flux for the back. Now we're gonna do the flux for the top. The flux for the top is going to be, um, we have a change in the x direction to change in the dz, dz direction. So we're gonna have, and this is uh, in the positive iy. So we're gonna be using beta xy iy times d x dz iy. So these are gonna be equal to one. And after that, you're gonna have to take the double integral is going to be equal to the double integral, double integral, zero to W and zero to L. This is going to be, take out, take out the constants, is going to be beta. Beta is the only constant. This is going to be x, y, dx, dz. So let's do x first. Beta x squared over 2 and this is going to be integrated from 0 to L, 0 to L. So it's going to be integrated from 0 to L. And then we're going to have y dz integral from 0 to w. So this is going to be equal to beta L squared over 2. And y is going to be y, y, um, I think y, y is constant. Oh, yeah, y is constant also y is constant so it should have been put out so the integral of dz is just going to be z and that's going to be evaluated from w to zero which is equal to beta l squared over two y at this point is going to be h and z is just going to be w and that's the answer for <clears throat> the top now we're going to do the bottom the bottom um is already the bottom we know it's at y equals zero and we know it's negative IY is equal to IY times IY. Um, so it's supposed to be negative one. But when you put in the formula, beta XY, beta XY, when you plug in zero here, the whole thing is gonna be zero. So we know that's zero. Now we're gonna do the flux of the left. The flux of the left is going in the negative IX direction negative ix by ix is equal to negative one, but the ix has alpha x, alpha x, ix, and the left direction, it's at x equals, it's at x equals zero. Left is at x equals zero. Yeah, the left is at x equals zero, so this is gonna be zero for the left. Now we're gonna do the right and this one, is gonna be the same thing, alpha x i x times um, dy dz, dy dz, yeah, dy dz, and we're gonna do i x direction. So when you take the double, actually for this one, for this one, um, you don't need the double integral because it's equal, so it's gonna be alpha x y z, which is equal to alpha x, the y is gonna be h, yeah, alpha x, y, z, alpha x, y, z, yeah, you just have to plug in everything, alpha x, l, w, alpha x, l, w, and h, x is, x is l, yeah, x is l, so, yeah, x is l. Yeah, we're just gonna sub in all the values for it, so it's gonna be alpha, l, the y is going to be h, and the z is going to be w. So that's the final answer for the flux to the right, and that's it for exam one.
good luck on your exam and I'll see y'all in my next video. I wanna put 2018 out, but that's probably gonna come out tomorrow or the day after. So thank you guys for watching, subscribe and leave a like and I'll see y'all in my next video.